Hi there, Monica Poole here. Today I'm going to show you how we're going to make our orangutan applique into a quilted cushion with a zipper in the back. For our cushion we're going to use the sketchy applique technique like we did in our llama so you can check out our llama YouTube clip to see the technique. You can use any applique stitch that you like and then you can quilt it just in the same way that we did with Kev the koala. For sketchy applique you need to have your top layer held together with a piece of batting and backing. Today we're going to try using some basting spray. Our background square for our applique is is 20 inches or 50 centimeters so cut a piece of batting and backing which is just going to be a little bit bigger first of all start with your backing fabric smoothed over on top of your batting then peel back one side of your backing fabric and just apply a light application of basting spray onto the batting never onto the fabric just in case it leaves stains peel back the other side and do the same thing. You can see that is nice and held together now. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing again. Also make sure that you use some paper to protect your table because you don't want to get excess spray of the glue on your table because it will make it sticky. And here's my layers all held together ready to sew. This is a great tip if you don't want to use pins but make sure you use basting spray in a well ventilated area because it does have a little bit of a smell. For the stitching I'm going to use a variegated cotton thread on top just a grey in the bobbin and I'm going to attach my free motion foot and drop my feed dogs. I'm going to head over to the machine and start stitching now. For the butterflies, I drew in some antennas, first of all, before I started. Here's our orangutan all stitched with the sketchy applique around the edge. Now he is going to need some additional quilting around the edge of him. So you can quilt that any way you like. You might want to do straight lines around the edge just the same way we did with Kev the koala. Or we're going to show you how we do our free motion twinkling stars like we did on the Twilight Dreaming quilt. First of all, mark the position of where you think you need to add some extra quilting. And I always do this just with little crosses all the way around the edge filling in the open spaces. First of all, start in the centre of your cross and bring the bobbin thread up to the top just like we normally do. Firstly, I'm going to stitch backwards. Then I'm going to stop, remove the excess threads and I'm going to sew back down to the center, continue on, come back and I'm gonna stop in the center. Then I'm gonna spin, I'm gonna go backwards and forwards and backwards. And then I'm going to rotate again and I'm gonna sew in the middle on the diagonal. So coming forwards, backwards and forwards, stop me again in the center. And the same thing again. And I 
always stop with a couple of small stitches at the end. And there's my twinkling star. Now you can actually do this with your walking foot if you want to. And I'm just going to continue on now stitching my twinkling stars. All done, now time to make into a cushion. Trim away the excess batting and backing, making sure that your cushion top is nice and square. We're going to insert our zipper in the centre back of the cushion. That way we're still going to be able to do our top stitch around the edge just the same way that we did on Kev the Koala. For the cushion backs, you're going to need two rectangles that are the same length as the cushion, but half the width adding one inch seam allowance. So we've got 20 inches by 10 plus another makes it 11 inches. And there's our other piece there. Where possible, cut your rectangles down the fabric in the same direction as the selvage. The reason for this is that the downwaist grain doesn't have a lot of stretch. That's gonna work well because zippers don't have any stretch. So they're going to sew together nicely rather than trying to sew the stretchy crossways grain onto a zipper tape that doesn't stretch. Neaten one long edge of each cushion back by pressing over by a quarter of an inch or six millimeters, and then we're going to stitch that. This just saves us zigzagging or having to get the overlocker out. Stitch nice and close to the folded edge of the fabric. Place your two cushion backs with the right sides facing. Measure two inches down from the top edge and two inches up from the bottom edge. At the sewing machine, sew from the top edge down to the mark with a two centimetre seam allowance or a three quarters of an inch seam allowance. Reversing at the top and reversing at the mark. Slide down to our bottom edge and we're going to start sewing at the mark, a reverse stitch and off to the bottom edge. The next step is to set your machine to the longest stitch length um, that it has. So I'm setting mine to five and now I'm going to sew in between these stitching lines. I'm using that two centimetre seam allowance line, so I'm just running my fabric along there. So this is a large stitch length. This is just temporary and will be unpicked once the zipper goes in. And don't tie up at the beginning or the end of this stitch. Now press your seam open. Flip the cushion back over so that the right side is facing up. I'm going to show you a great little tip here. We're actually going to mark our stitching line for the zipper. So use a marker that can easily be erased from your fabric. I'm using a sew line pen here. So this one here actually either washes out in water or it has got a, another um, pen that can be removed. So I've marked two inches at the top, two inches at the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mark my stitching line which is going to be a quarter of an inch away from the seam. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Hold my zipper in place with a double sided wash away tape. Centre your zipper so that you have the same amount extending past each edge. Unzip the zipper a little bit and then cut two pieces of the tape that are the same length, just a little bit longer than our opening. And cut one piece that is about an inch or two and a half centimetres long. 
Position your first piece so that it's going to be level with our two inch mark. That's going to hold our zippers together, our zipper end there. Now, zip the pull up so that it's level with that piece of tape. And now position a piece of tape along both edges of the zipper. Positioning it closer to the outer edge. So running it along the edge of the zipper tape. Now flip the cushion over to the wrong side and mark two inches away from the top edge. Now we're going to peel away the paper backing from the double sided tape. That's going to leave you with the glue, just a little strip of glue. Now we're going to flip the zipper over and we're going to line our little piece of tape that's going across with our just above the marked line. And we're centering the zipper so that the zipper teeth are going to be centered underneath the seam. So you can do that just by following it along. Just double checking every couple of inches to make sure that that's nice and centered. An important thing is to make sure that everything's nice and smooth underneath that zipper. Now just say for instance if you don't have this tape, what you would do is pin your zipper from the underneath side first. Now when we sew, we're going to flip it over to the so over to the top. So what I would do is I would then repin on our marked line and then take those pins out from the underneath. So now I'm going to head to the sewing machine so I can sew on the marked line. At the sewing machine, attach your zipper foot with the needle positioned on the right side. The other thing I've done is I've moved my needle over slightly so that it's level with the edge of the foot. What that means is that when I put my foot down, all I have to do is align the edge of the foot with the marked line and that's going to make it easy for me to sew. I'm not starting right at the top, I always like to start maybe about um, five centimetres or a little bit down from the top edge and I'm going to start with a little reverse stitch. Don't forget to put your stitch length back to the normal um, length of 2.5 and I'm just going to sew on the marked line all the way around. Even though we've cut our fabric out um, in the same direction as the selvage, if you find that your fabric is a little bit stretchy and starts to move along a little bit, what you can do is you can just use, I'm using um, my tweezers here, or you can also use a pin or a tailor's or And what I'm doing is I'm just easing that fabric towards the foot so that I don't end up with twists. I'm going to pivot at the bottom edge and I'm going to very carefully sew across the zipper teeth. And I'm coming back up the other side. Can you see how I'm just easing those little waves of fabric towards the needle? And the reason why this happens is because, as I mentioned before, the zipper tape is very solid, it has no stretch or give in it, whereas our fabric does. Now, as I approach the top, I'm just going to hold that flat, and you can see that my zipper pull is actually popping out a little bit, but that's good, because we just want to continue sewing up. Our seam is probably going to get a little bit wider there, or our stitching line, and I'm just going to stitch past the zipper pull, then I'm going to turn around, come across, very carefully sewing across the zipper teeth, and then coming back down the other side. Holding that flat so I don't end up with a little pleat there. And then I'm just going to finish with a little reverse stitch. Yeah, the next step from there is the magic part and that's where we're just going to unpick our stitching line there and here's my finished zipper. Isn't that neat? And this is what it looks like from the back.
And what I'm going to do is just cut off some excess of the zipper tape. Undo the zipper so that we'll be able to turn the cushion through and place it right sides together with the cushion top. Pin all the way around the edge, ready for sewing. Stitch all the way around the edge using the edge of your foot as a guide on the edge of the fabric. Trim the corners to remove the excess bulk and turn the cushion through to the right side. This is my trick for the corner. I like to put my finger in the corner, push the seam allowance in and push through like that. Continue turning the cushion through. I also like to make sure that my corners are nice and out by using a point turner just poking out from the inside. Now, press around the edge of your cushion, making sure it's all nice and neat. And then we're gonna pop a few pins around the edge, ready to top stitch around the edge. Top stitch around the edge with the edge of your foot positioned on the edge of the cushion. Our cushion insert is going to be 20 inches or 50 centimetres square. Our cushion actually started off at 20 inches but is now smaller due to all the stitching. But that's okay, that's going to give us a nice, thick, puffy cushion. And here's our cushion, all finished.